Every time we pick up the Bible, we should thank the good Lord for John Wycliffe, who was called to preach. Wycliffe said, Holy Scripture is the highest authority for every believer of faith, the foundation of reform. Wycliffe believed that everyone should have access to the Word of God. In this biography, we will learn about this great reformer and his stand against the Roman Catholic Church. Wycliffe was born in 13 and 24 in Yorkshire, England. Wycliffe was, lived at a time when the church was at its apex, and often it was referred to as Our Lord God the Pope. Wycliffe excelled academically, and several of his professors took him under his wing and helped to mold the young theologian's mind. While at Oxford, he was elected Master at Oxford, and there he took a stance against the mendicant monks. He took a stance against their, un, against their unholy practices in the way that they recruited their young recruits. Um, they viewed themselves as holy beggars living a lifestyle of piety, but yet Wycliffe viewed them as unholy beggars and ones that lacked true humility in Christ. He took a stand against them and against the papacy that supported them. This would put Wycliffe in the spotlight of the papacy for reform against the Catholic Church and its papacy. Wycliffe gained notoriety quickly and soon was commissioned by King John to defend him in an excommunication university. Controversy, excuse me. Wycliffe defended the king not by king's law, imperial law, canon law, but by Christ's laws. Wycliffe doing so incensed the Pope, and this would be the catalyst that would fuel the bitterness between Wycliffe and the papacy. Wycliffe was critical of priests that taught Latin fables and taught Christian stories, and who spoke little about scripture. Wycliffe preached sound biblical messages in English and not Latin. His teachings were often referred to as heresies as they undermined the Pope's authorities over the scriptures. In turn, Pope Gregory issued three bulls against Wycliffe. However, this did not deter Wycliffe. He would soon be under house arrest and face examination under Archbishop of London. He sent Wycliffe away with a dictate that restrained him from preaching controversial doctrine in the future. In response, Wycliffe defended himself with an entreaty known as the Seven Heresies. Wycliffe used the Lord's Prayer as a template. This was strategic as the average layperson knew it and recited it on a daily basis. The first one is our Father. He suggests that prayers offered by priests or special prayers by priests are better than God's children to their Father. Thy kingdom come. He accused Rome of heresy and having made bad prelates of members of the church or the kingdom of God by ecclesiastical right rather than faith. Thy will be done. The church is deemed guilty of heresy on the account of granting indulgences, that God would save those who they pray for. Give us this day our daily bread. He attacked transubstantiation for suggesting that the sacred host is not bread in any sense. Forgive us of our trespasses. This is the notion that a priest can forgive and grant absolution, not according to God's commandment, but according to his own judgment and assume a power that belongs to God alone. Lead us not into temptation. He decided that the notion that friars through pious living are granted exemptation from temptation and deliver us from evil. He accused the church of embracing a theology that imagines modernistic vows protect one from spiritual assault. After Wycliffe published The Seven Heresies, he began his greatest work translating the Bible from Latin to contemporary English. Wycliffe once said, Englishmen learn Christ's law best in English. Moses heard God's law in his own tongue, and so did the apostles. Wycliffe wanted the average person to have God's word, not just priests. Wycliffe died on December 29, 1384, from a second stroke. Even after his death, the papacy was incensed over his legacy and exhumed his body and burned his bones and threw them in the swift. Wycliffe is often referred to as the morning star of the Reformation, the first light before the dawning of the day. Thank the good Lord for John Wycliffe.